But what form does vengeance take when it is embraced by an individual who, born with a heart ablaze, must temper the inferno within for the greater good? This individual was named Robute Gilliman, the Primarch of the Ultramarines, a paragon of intellect and strategic prowess surpassing even his brethren. Yet, it is his own lack of temperance that threatens to be his undoing. Through a cruel twist of fate, the twenty sons of the Emperor, kidnapped and scattered across the vastness of the galaxy, found their destinies diverging on the planets that birthed the Primarchs. Some were destined for lives steeped in heroism, while others faced the harshness of adversity. Gilliman's path bore witness to both extremes. Encased within incubation capsule number 13, he traversed the galaxy to land upon the southern expanse of the eastern frontier. McCrag, the planet that cradled him, was a perilous realm, its landscape dominated by icy highlands bereft of vitality. Yet, fortune smiled upon this small baby, placing him amidst the hunting grounds of the local aristocracy. McCrag's civilization, born in the dark age of technology, endured the age of strife, cultivating an orderly society. On this planet where life clung tenaciously to existence, its denizens possessed obsolete ships that, when the cosmic winds were favorable, dared the warp. Thus, Robute Gilliman's journey unfolded against the backdrop of a world shaped by both danger and order, an environment that would temper his fiery essence in ways beyond reckoning. On McCrag, a discovery by hunters unraveled a capsule housing an immaculate child, an embodiment of advanced technology from another realm. Encircled by a radiant aura of power, this extraordinary infant found its way to one of the leaders reigning over McCrag, Connor Gilliman. Bestowing upon the infant the noble title of Robute, Connor became the nurturing figure in the life of the remarkable child. Amidst a milieu saturated with love and parental devotion, the Primarch formed a bond with Connor, a connection enduring even through the eons of ten millennia. Robute grew at an astonishing pace, leaving an impression on those witnessing his physical prowess and wise intellect. Before reaching a mere decade on Macreg, Robute absorbed the wisdom of the planet's foremost scholars, displaying an unparalleled comprehension of liberal arts. His mind, a masterful organizer of fragmented knowledge, sifted through scant data to draw precise conclusions, his memory an impeccable vault even for fleeting glimpses of information. Yet, the peak of his accomplishments unfolded in the realm of Warcraft. With confidence in his son's abilities, Connor Gilliman dispatched him to quell the frigid expanses of Illyrium, a distant northern land. Here, barbaric factions clashed incessantly, their cold territories teeming with ruthless bandits and mercenaries devoid of moral compass. Robute orchestrated a flawless military campaign, not only annexing territory, but also earning the respect of the unyielding northern tribes. As Robute returned to the bustling heart of Macrag, his soul alight with the ember of triumph, he yearned to share this pivotal moment with his father. Yet fate had something else in store. The capital he had longed to rejoin was ensnared in the jagged claws of rebellion a chaotic tempest that threatened to consume all in its path. Galen, the second in command of the state, shrouded in the cloak of duplicity, exploited the Primarch's absence and the absence of a significant faction of troops to orchestrate a malevolent coup against Connor. Betrayal had unfurled its treacherous banners, catching Connor off guard. Collaborating with the echelons of local nobility, Galen sought to wrest sovereignty away. Galan's hate extended beyond the Elder Gilliman to his supernaturally gifted son, whose powers cast a shadow over the conspirators. The rebellion found its champions among the entrenched aristocracy, stalwarts of an order built upon the sweat of powerless laborers. Connor's radical reforms threatened this established paradigm, their seismic tremors signaling the demise of an antiquated era. Their alliance sought to elevate the rights of workers, eroding the aristocracy's grip on power. This transformation demanded more than ideological shifts. It compelled the elite to invest in revitalizing the decaying state infrastructure, a bitter pill they were loath to swallow. As Robute neared the capital, 
his heart soaring with the wings of triumph, he bore witness to a city shrouded in the pall of anarchy. The once thriving streets now bore the scars of chaos, teeming with displaced souls fleeing the embrace of their homes. News of the upheaval reached the Primarch in a thunderclap of fury, prompting him to abandon his troops to confront the chaos unfolding at the Senate building. However, the Citadel of Governance lay shattered, its ruins echoing the chorus of a city forsaken. Deep within the debris he discovered his father, life waning amid the ruins. The wounded consul might have clung to life if his arrival had been slightly earlier. As Connor's fading breaths revealed Galen's betrayal, an enraged Robute cast his fury upon the rebels. Merging his forces with aggrieved citizens, he dismantled the mercenary legions, adorning the city with the somber silhouette of gallows bearing the weight of noble conspirators. The instigators faced the justice of public execution, the echoes of their demise heralding the return of order to the capital and its hinterlands. Gratitude painted the streets as citizens, grateful and weary, converged at the shattered Senate building to greet their liberator. McCrag, no longer willing to endure the aristocracy, yearned for unity. In a thunderous ovation, Robute Gilliman embraced the mantle of sole ruler for the first time, the applause echoing as the resounding cadence of a newfound era. Through the wisdom of the enlightened Primarch, the planet transformed into a bastion of meritocracy, a utopian realm unique to Macrag. Poverty crumbled beneath the weight of progress, dissipating like morning mist beneath the dawning sun. The metamorphosis of the military was nothing short of extraordinary, as the army evolved into a formidable force, donned in the finest armaments that innovation could conceive. The planet, now self-reliant and technologically advanced, wove threads of trade with distant systems, cementing McCrag's status as a leader among celestial entities. Under the unchallenged dominion of Robute Gilliman, society ascended to zeniths of prosperity. In the days of the Primarch's campaigns against the barbaric Illyrians amidst the frigid expanses of the Northern Territories, the Emperor of Mankind, his presence gracing the celestial canvas of Espanda, heard tales resonating with fervor and admiration for the remarkable son of Connor Gilliman. The Emperor, captivated by the notion that Robute could be one of his missing Primarchs, embarked on a hasty pilgrimage to meet him. Yet, as fate would weave its thread, a tempest of the warp seized the Emperor's vessel, veering it off course and delaying the expedition's arrival on Macrag until half a decade had passed since Gilliman's ascension to the throne. The Emperor, harboring visions of an ideal human realm, flourishing under the aegis of a charismatic and gifted leader, beheld the grandeur of his son's accomplishments. Impressed by the flourishing utopia, the Lord of Mankind, bestowed upon Robute the stewardship of the 13th Legion of Space Troopers, a force destined to lead the Astartes warriors. Under Gilliman's strategic acumen, the Ultramarines emerged as a legion peerless in tactical equilibrium and strategic brilliance. The wisdom of battle theories harmonized with practice precision, as the Ultramarines executed their campaigns with exceptional efficiency, swiftly dismantling any adversary in their path. During their Imperial conquest, the Ultramarines, second only to the Lunar Wolves, orchestrated the subjugation of countless worlds. However, Gilliman's ambitions transcended mere rulership. Once a planet fell under his banner, he remained an architect of stability. With sagely wisdom, he erected systems of governance loyal to the Emperor, leaving trusted counselors to cultivate an industry and logistics seamlessly integrating the conquered realm into the Imperium's umbrella. Gilliman's concern transcended the mere acquisition of dominion. It was the welfare of the people, an ethos that set him apart from other Imperial leaders. Even during his far-reaching campaigns, he remained steadfast in tending to the needs of Macrag and its planetary neighbors. Robute, with meticulous foresight, had created a web of efficiency within his home world, a mobilization system intricate and effective. Through its seamless operation, the Ultramarines enjoyed an unceasing influx of fresh recruits, a river of resilience that meandered through the history of their legion. Guided by adept leadership, the Ultramarines emerged not just as warriors, 
but as a legionary force unparalleled in number across the galaxy. The toll of battle, minimized by the intelligent and conservative command, augmented their ranks, making them a legionary host whose multitude surpassed all other space marine chapters. In the era preceding the cataclysm of the Horus heresy, a directive emanated from the Emperor's will. Monarchia, a city of reverence for Primarch Lorgar and his devoted word-bearers, stood marked for destruction. The fervent religiosity that clung to the city clashed vehemently with the embrace of the Imperial truth, upheld by the Imperium. The vanguard of this assault was none other than Robute and his Ultramarines, at the behest of the Emperor. As the heresy unfurled its dark tendrils across the cosmos, the word-bearers, now tainted by the embrace of chaos, sought retribution. The past sins, woven into the fabric of vengeance, had come full circle. In the aftermath, Robute, burdened by the weight of hindsight, acknowledged the role the Ultramarines played in pushing the word-bearers towards the abyss of chaos. The flames of war, ignited on the day of Monarchia's fall, had spiraled into a firestorm that engulfed the galaxy. Despite lacking the visionary gifts of his brethren, Gilliman harbored the conviction that he should have foreseen the dire outcome of annihilating the 17th Legion and its Primarch. Yet foresight eluded him, and they succumbed to the shadows. The word bearers descended upon Kalth in a maelstrom of madness seeking a reckoning. The unexpected betrayal transmuted alliances into a gory battlefield. Gilliman admitted his intemperance exacerbated the damage. Infuriated by his brother's treachery, his anger overshadowed strategic wisdom. Kor Faron, wielding a cursed blade, aimed to defile the avenging son of the Emperor, and in the throes of battle, inflicted a wound upon Gilliman. Yet, resilient against the siren call of chaos, the Primarch tore out the heart of the Wordbearer's first captain, proof of his immunity to the dark temptations. The Ultramarines, guided by the loyal hand of Gilliman, displayed a lethal efficacy, dismantling the forces of the traitors. Confronted by the horrors wrought by his once brother, Robute Gilliman, unyielding in his loyalty to the Emperor, sanctioned the breach of their doctrine, permitting the wielders of psychic powers among the librarians to unleash their forbidden talents. The malevolence of the word-bearers manifested not solely in the ravaging assault upon Kalth, but in the dark knowledge they wielded. With twisted incantations, these zealots unraveled the very fabric of space, summoning warp storms that severed planets from the radiant embrace of the Imperium. Among the celestial realms ensnared in this cosmic tempest was Ultramar, now shrouded in isolation. The vanishing beacon of the Emperor's psychic resonance cast an ominous shadow, hinting at the potential demise of the Sovereign and the Sacred Throne world. Gilliman, bearing the weight of this foreboding uncertainty, faced the spectre of his father's possible loss with stoic grace. In this pivotal moment, he summoned the reserves, recognizing that even in the hypothetical demise of the Emperor, he would have at least damaged upon the treacherous brother legions. The rebellious forces, he reasoned, must be weakened, their aspirations for full usurpation thwarted by the sacrificial hand of his father. He declared resolutely that the battle for the Imperium would continue, an ongoing struggle against the encroaching darkness. In the pursuit of salvation of the galaxy, the imperative to marshal all conceivable forces and erect a new bastion for humanity's dominion became undeniable. Robute Gilliman set his plans into motion, erecting a haven of unparalleled fortitude for the loyal forces, a sanctum christened Imperium Secundus. Conceived by the progenitor of the Ultramarines, this fledgling kingdom emerged as a sanctuary, a refuge for those who remained steadfast in their loyalty to the Imperium. The resonance of unity extended its call, drawing forth loyal allies such as Sanguinius and Lionel Johnson, their legions converging within the protective walls of Imperium Secundus. Swiftly responding to the initial echoes of the Horus heresy, Robute marshaled his forces in a desperate race to safeguard the throne world of terror. Yet, despite meticulous planning and a fleet launched with unparalleled haste, the Primarch found himself, for the second time in his storied existence, 
unable to arrive in time to aid his father. The dark sorceries of the word bearers, tearing through the fabric of space, allowed no respite for the salvation of the Imperium's future. An insidious tempest swept across the galaxy, laying waste to a significant portion of the Legionis Astartes and tainting another segment with the malevolent touch of chaos. Yet, guided by Robute Gilliman, the 13th Legion retained its distinction as the most numerous legion amid the chaos. Assuming the mantle of Lord Commander, Gilliman, for several years following the Arch-Traitor's insurrection, wielded authority with unwavering efficacy. His leadership, a bulwark against the looming collapse of the Imperium, carved a resolute path forward in the aftermath of tragedy, a beacon of order amid the galactic turmoil. During this period of chaos, Gilliman unleashed order by revealing his magnum opus upon the world, the Codex Astartes. A tome forged not merely in ink and parchment, but in the experience of battle. It became a sacred scripture among the Space Marine chapters. Within the Codex's holy text, Gilliman encapsulated more than the mere stratagems of warfare. It held the distilled essence of countless warriors who had danced upon the edge of oblivion, their insights woven into the pages. Across millennia, chapters bowed before the Codex, its words etched into the very fiber of their existence. Among the Ultramarines, the ritual of committing entire chapters to memory became a sacred duty. Yet, as the currents of time flowed forward, Gilliman, architect of the Codex, found himself at odds with his creation. Born from a source of betrayal, the Codex Astartes was a symbol to the acknowledgement that treachery was an indomitable aspect of humanity. To curb the potential for corruption, Gilliman advocated the dispersion of power, preventing its concentration in a single hand. Gilliman, ever vigilant, noticed the flaws woven into the fabric of his creation. His gaze shifted beyond the legions, realizing that the Codex had omitted crucial aspects concerning the Council of all the chapters. In a moment of clarity, he decided to rewrite it, birthing the Codex Imperialis. This revised doctrine transcended the bounds of war, embracing the broader mantle of governance that the sprawling empire yearned for in the 41st millennium. In a canvas of ink and wisdom, Gilliman wanted to craft a legacy that not only withstood the trials of the battlefield, but also illuminated the path toward an era of righteous rule, ushering in an age where the Imperium would find its salvation. The confrontation with the fallen Primarch brother, Fulgrim, unfolded as a tragedy, a narrative of mistakes that even the brilliant strategist, Gilliman, found himself ensnared within. Long before the clash commenced, a veil of errors descended upon Gilliman's discerning mind, betraying the very battle doctrines he himself had crafted. The shadows of anger eclipsed reason, compelling him to hasten towards a destiny he could not yet predict. Aware of the disagreement between his actions and the Codex Astartes, Gilliman sought to exploit a perceived vulnerability in Fulgrim's defenses. Yet Fulgrim unraveled the shields of his flagship, enticing his wrathful brother onto the vessel, the Emperor's pride. The journey through the ship became a pilgrimage for Gilliman, navigating the twisted corridors laden with memories of a bygone camaraderie. The echoes of a time when Fulgrim had warmly embraced him in a hall filled with jubilant children of the Emperor played out like ghosts from the past. The weight of history pressed upon Gilliman's conscience, and in the grip of emotions, he turned a blind eye to both his commander's counsel and the sanctity of his own code. Against the prudent counsel of his better judgment, the Primarch ventured alone to the hall where the transformed demon prince awaited. Despite the long-standing enmity between them, Gilliman couldn't stifle the surge of tears witnessing what Fulgrim had become. The once familiar face mocked him, extolling the virtues of a new master and recounting every perceived lapse in Gilliman's defense of the Imperium, deep wounds to the soul of a Primarch loyal to the Emperor. In a moment of stark realization, Gilliman understood the gravity of his errors and the need for retreat. Yet he faced a superior foe. Fulgrim delivered a fatal blow, piercing Gilliman's throat. Even on the edge of death, Fulgrim explained, revealing the vulnerability on Gilliman's neck, the residue of a cursed blade wielded by Kor Firen. Captain, 
of the word bearers. The poison of Fulgrim's demonic sword, insidious and potent, overcame Gilliman's enhanced physiology. With his demise looming, the Primarch cried out questioning the uncertain fate of humanity's leadership. Even in the grasp of mortality, Gilliman's thoughts remained steadfast on the Imperium's destiny and its people. Fortunately, the valiant Ultramarine's warriors intervened, evacuating their wounded Lord Commander and placing him in stasis within the sacred halls of Macrag. For ten millennia, Gilliman, frozen in time, rested upon a marble throne within the Fortress of Hera, his presence a revered icon for the Imperium. Whispers among religious pilgrims spoke of gradual healing, nurturing the belief that the Emperor's great son would reawaken to once again stand as humanity's loyal defender. Yet in the face of the trials that beset the Ultramar system, Robute Gilliman did not awake. Across the millennia, the intricate governance he had woven around Macrag unraveled, threads of authority fraying into neglect and decay. Ultramar experienced clashes with orcs, with some planets awakening the dormant spectre of Necrons. Yet amid these conflicts, the most tragic chapter occurred with the Tyranid invasion that fell upon Macrag. Through the martial prowess and the maneuvers of the Ultramarines, the Xenos threat was thankfully vanquished, their remnants extinguished across neighboring planets. The capital, however, bore the scars of this strife, its grandeur reduced to desolate ruins, Yet even in the shadow of this monumental degradation, graver tribulations awaited the Gilliman homeworld. As the 41st millennium drew to its close, the 13th Black Crusade led by the nefarious Abaddon, the despoiler descended upon Ultramar. Abaddon, the treacherous sun, unleashed chaos across the galaxy, marshalling legions of traitorous forces under his banner. The despoiler's ruthless campaign left Ultramar in tatters. Within this maelstrom, a cosmic storm threatened to extinguish the last glimmers of hope in the fading light of the 41st millennium. Amidst Ultramar, Abaddon appeared, drawn by the cryptic tidings that Belisarius Cowl had borne an ancient relic to Macrag, a relic said to possess the potential to alter the tides of the enduring war and thwart the impending triumph of the insidious chaos. Through centuries of unwavering dedication under the decree of Robute Gilliman, the Archmagos Dominus, Belisarius Call, toiled tirelessly on the ambitious endeavor of forging the Primaris Space Marines. Call's enigmatic pursuits even led him to forge alliances on the planet, Cardia. Nevertheless, the Black Crusade orchestrated by Abaddon laid waste to the world, despite Call's endeavors. In the throes of destruction, Call, with an unlikely alliance with the Eldar, orchestrated an escape from the collapsing planet transcending realms through the webway to find sanctuary in Ultramar. Upon the sacred soil of Macrag, Belisarius was confronted by none other than Kalgar, Ultramar's stalwart Lord Defender and the venerable Chapter Master of the Ultramarines. With conviction, he revealed the truth. Before the clash with Fulgrim, Gilliman, foreseeing a dire need, had entrusted the Techno-Priest with an important duty to find a way to resurrect him should he fall in battle. The tale was met with skepticism, and only after the Legion's chief librarian, Tigurius, bore witness to visions prophesying Gilliman's rebirth, did the Ultramarines reluctantly admit the arrivals. Meanwhile, Chaos's relentless onslaught besieged Macraig, yet Call, undeterred, embarked upon his divine task. Yet, as the Primarch's revival commenced, the Black Legion redirected their malevolent focus towards the Fortress of Hera, housing the sacred stasis pod. In this dire hour, the Eldari invoked their patron Inead, melding the god's power over life and death with Cowl's technology. The sacred fusion of Eldar magic and secret technology culminated in the rousing awakening of Robute Gilliman, who emerged from an eons long slumber. Before an astonished audience, the revitalized Primarch swiftly plunged into the maelstrom of battle. His titanic might swept aside the hordes of chaos, and with the Ultramarines reinvigorated by the return of their Patriarch, they finally expelled the malevolent forces from their beleaguered planet. Triumphant, Robute Gilliman guided the rejuvenated Macrag and the Ultramarines to a resplendent victory. 
In the span of a few fleeting months, the entire system underwent a thorough purgation, expelling the insidious chaos that had once ensnared it. The friendly Xenos, having played their part, departed from Macrag, carrying with them the Primarch's sincere blessing. Yet, Gilliman noticed the world he had sacrificed himself to reclaim was no longer the pristine bastion for which he had willingly given his life. Change, unforeseen and profound, had seeped into the fabric of the once familiar landscape. Fanatical cultists had his father elevated to godhood. Gazing upon the twisted visage of the Imperium, Robute couldn't bear the repugnance that festered within its decaying foundations. It was a realm no longer driven by reason and hope, but ensnared by fear and ignorance. The once glorious civilization had become a putrid husk, infected by a mad religion wielded mercilessly by the Inquisition, extinguishing any rebellious spark with ruthless efficiency. He harbored an aversion to this age and loathed the temporal confines that ensnared him. Yet, the initial tempest of Gilliman's wrath ebbed away giving rise to a more profound realization. Despite the monstrous transformation of these people, a duty imposed itself upon him, a responsibility to salvage them from the abyss. But as Gilliman surveyed the nightmarish scene surrounding him, demonic legions and a bleak fate for those trapped in the subterranean depths of the hives, he glimpsed a daunting truth. The echoes of the Horus heresy had shattered the dream of prosperity and freedom for humanity. The only flicker of solace in this desolate existence lay in the faith that clung desperately to the Emperor's deified image. Gilliman, not afraid to confront the Inquisition, chose not outright rebellion, but subtle cooperation. His strategy was to first vanquish the external threats that plagued their existence before turning his attention to the spiritual reclamation of civilization. Ever the steward of the people's welfare, Gilliman embarked on the Terran Crusade to rekindle the flame of humanity's spirit. During their journey to Terra, Magnus the Red released a tumultuous warp, ensnaring the ultramarine fleet. The poisoned currents flung the ships toward demon-infested realms, leaving behind a wake of catastrophic casualties that weighed heavily on Gilliman's conscience. A glimmer of salvation emerged from the Eldar, their seer Ultran extending an enigmatic hand to aid the beleaguered Ultramarines. Through psychic whispers, the Eldar guided Gilliman on the perilous path to re-enter real space. However, as the war-ravaged Ultramarine vessels neared their destination, a colossal chaos fleet, commanded by the formidable demon Kairos Fateweaver, materialized to thwart their passage. He trapped Gilliman with ethereal chains forged from the Primarch's own turbulent emotions, compelling the surviving Ultramarines to submit after a dire threat to their lives. Plans to imprison Gilliman within a Blackstone fortress were thwarted by the intervention of Eldar Harlequins, who whisked him and the remaining warriors away across the enigmatic web to the Sanctuary of the Moon. Upon the lunar landscape, the Crusade confronted Magnus the Red and his Thousand Sons, poised to attack the throne world. Guided by the support of the Imperial Fists, the Sisters of Silence and the Eldar, Gilliman achieved victory after enduring myriad trials. The culmination of the arduous journey brought Gilliman to the Imperial Palace where he stood before his father, the Emperor. The meeting, fleeting in the span of seconds but an eternity for Gilliman, unfolded amidst the Emperor's terrifying majesty a scene obscured from external observation by blinding light and resounding fury that seemed to stretch into eternity. Upon the golden throne, a decaying cadaver sat, yet it exuded regality and boundless power. Far from death, the Emperor had ascended to unprecedented strength, contemplating his next move, undeniably poised to rise and rule with justice once again someday. The creature on the throne was not merely a father, but a symbol an instrument of creation entwined with the past, despair, and degradation. The Primarch resumed the mantle of Lord Commander of the Imperium, gathering a formidable host to confront the encroaching chaos and resurrect the shattered aspirations of a blissful future for mankind. 
Among the arsenal destined for this impending conflict were the Primus Space Marines, forged by the skilled hands of Belisarius Cowell under the directive of Robert A. Gilliman. These warriors, swift and robust beyond their predecessors, donned the latest in armament and armor, transforming them into a formidable force that bolstered the Loyalist front across the galaxy. Their metal shone brightly during the Confrontation of Terror, a second trial for the throne world, as the blood god Khorne, thirsting to display his dominance, unleashed infernal legions upon the Imperial Palace. Following the triumphant defense, Gilliman spearheaded a crusade, uniting the Sisters of Silence, Primaris Astartes, and the various chapters in the relentless pursuit of cleansing Chaos's taint. These rational and benevolent actions, seen as acts of divine generosity by mortals, only served to further solidify Gilliman's image as the Emperor's son, a perception that secretly rankled the Primarch. Every decisive move by the Lord Commander now necessitated gestures that aligned with the exigencies of this new reality. Even the Ultramarines, who professed to view the Emperor as an exceptional man rather than a deity, couldn't help but be ensnared in awe in Gilliman's presence. It became apparent that standing alone against a civilization gripped by madness was futile. Gilliman's task lay in reigning in this unraveling civilization, guiding it along a more prosperous path. Completing the Terran campaign, Gilliman, somber, returned to Ultramar. Nurgle's looming threat, a blight on his kingdom, demanded his immediate attention. Prosperous planets, serene pearls amid galactic turmoil, captivated Nurgle's desire. His twisted intent sought to convert these worlds into a putrid garden. Seeds of decay sown, selected planets succumbed to diseases, millions in Ultramar fell. From fallen bodies, as per the Lord of Decay's plan, demons emerged, and amongst the survivors' corpses, summoning even mightier servants. Three northern Ultramar worlds, now Scourge Stars, fell to Chaos's clutches. Under the plague, God's adept commanders, they became enemy strongholds. The Death Guard, guided by the fallen Primarch Mortarion, initiated a military invasion. Ultramar awaited calamities, the War of Flies being the first, obliterating worlds with viral bombardments, finishing survivors with the damned Legion's might. Slowly, inexorably, the damage spread. The Warp Storm's fury severed planets from Imperium communication, halting reinforcements. Defenders held hundreds of fronts on the day Gilliman returned. The Lord Commander's arrival nullified the traitor's tactical advantage. Chaos assaults repelled, yet Nurgle's commanders, Kugath Plaguefather, entered the fray. Attacks multiplied, spreading farther, almost impossible to quell. Victory was only glimpsed with support from Forge Worlds and Ultramarine Heirs orders. Gilliman, equal to Mortarion, fought until the fallen Primarch retreated. The conflicts against Nurgle's devotees persisted, an unyielding tide of battle sweeping across worlds. Gilliman, leading the Imperium's forces, faced a climactic confrontation at the very threshold of the Lord of Decay's inhabitants, a battle looming where Emperor's sons, Robute and Mortarion, would engage in a final duel. Employing a stratagem aligned with the sinister tenets of his cult, the demon prince Mortarion unleashed a virulent plague tailored for the Ultramarine's Primarch. Infused with the potent forces of chaos, Mortarion first felled Gilliman, then administered a poisoned syringe brimming with lethal concoctions designed to vanquish both of them. As the toxins corroded Gilliman's form, their malignant fumes wrought havoc, claiming the lives of space marines and demons alike. Even Mortarion, forced to erect a mental bastion against the encroaching death, succumbed to the monstrous spectacle. This unholy ritual sought to ensnare the Avenging Sun's soul within the fetid embrace of Nurgle, heralding the immersion of all Ultramar into the turbulent currents of the warp. Witnessing his brother's torment, Mortarion implored Gilliman to yield and pledge allegiance to the true god. Yet Gilliman, unyielding in his resolve, resisted the siren call of chaos. Amidst the throes of agonizing demise, Gilliman invoked memories of his final communion with the Emperor, beseeching divine intervention for the salvation of mankind. As the Primarch's body charred and armor disintegrated into rusted fragments, 
the unwavering thought of the father sustained him. Then, the emperor answered the call. Gilliman's desiccated remains ascended, his body and armor rejuvenated to an unprecedented magnitude. Startled demons fled in terror, and the earth quivered beneath the resonance of unseen chimes. Before Mortarion, the once dying brother now wielded unimaginable power, a celestial entity with eyes radiating luminous progeny, uttering words in Gilliman's voice. Bewildered by the apparition, Mortarion, in a moment of doubt, perceived the semblance of his father. Yet the entity disavowed the recognition, revealing itself as Robute Gilliman, the avenging son and guardian of the Imperium, resurrected by the Emperor's potent grace. The traitor, beset by uncertainty, recoiled and was swiftly drawn into a gaping portal consigned to the dominion of the Plague God. With the expulsion of demonic forces following their vanquished leader, clarity emerged in the skies, dispelling the lingering shroud of poisonous clouds. The planet, once enshrouded in turmoil, stood cleansed, a testament to the enduring resilience of the avenging sun and the unwavering might of the Emperor. This concludes today's chapter from the archives. Please like and subscribe if you want more. Leave a comment on which chapter we should reveal from the archives next.